a son, a brother, a father, a grandfather, a friend, a man of dry humor and deep feelings for the love of his life. Y'all, we are here to celebrate not a death, but a life, the life of Tom Stone. Let us pray. Lord God, be with us in the midst of our grieving, bolster our courage, and renew our spirits that we might remember Tom and remember him well. Be a part of our thoughts, the prayers, the music, our words, and your word as we hear. Comfort us now, please, in the great name of Jesus Christ. We pray this together. Amen. Let us continue in song with number 488, also in the Glory to God hymnal. I was there to hear your morning cry. <laughs> Soul. 
There's a season for everything. And a time for every matter under the heavens. A time for giving birth and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted. A time for killing and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for crying and a time for laughing. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces. A time for searching and a time for losing. A time for keeping and a time for throwing away. A time for tearing and a time for repairing. A time for keeping silent and a time for speaking. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for war. And a time for peace. Finally, in a letter to one of his disciples, Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, I have fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So you can tell a lot about a person, okay, by what they buy. Whether it's car parts, certain kind of yogurts, or antiques, right? And then they can speak to a person's interests, even their passions. But you can tell even more about a person by the questions that they are willing to ask. And God knows Tom was a curious person. As long as his family has known him, his family remembers him as a history buff. And it really didn't matter what the subject was. It, it might be world wars. It, it might be old airplanes. It might be the Holy Grail. It might be UFOs, the Mayan temples. But especially local history, Tom just ate it up. Wore his TV out watching the History Channel. But make no mistake, he was also a skeptical man. He didn't believe easily. You see, he was an amateur sportsman, running, swimming, cycling, even dog walking. And for those of you who don't think that that's a sport, I invite you to watch the Westminster Kennel Club's dog show. But he spent his career in textiles, knitting man to manager, right up until the industry left our area. And this meant that he and his family moved around a lot, which only fed his appetite for local lore. He met Carol, the love of his life, when, he, when she was still in high school, but they didn't start dating until the summer before she went to college. And we got married in 66. They started antiquing together, though, in 2001, combining his love of history and the bargain, because he loved the bargain, even when it wasn't really a bargain, but just so he thought it was, with her love of shopping and decorating, which need no explanation. It was an unstoppable force as evidenced by the number of antique booths, storage units, and pool rooms and garage that they kept. But the things that he would buy, maps, books, artwork, all of this pointed to his supreme interest in people. You see, Tom loved to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> But this love of people also fueled his interest in photography and genealogy, especially. Even other families' genealogies and gardening. And the reason that he loved gardening and its connections with people is because he loved to eat. But his hands on nature meant that he was destined to own tools and to craft furniture. Desks, tables, chairs, even a miniature stage. Having something to do was key. It, if it made someone happy, that was a bonus. His restlessness with how his cancer forced him to live is rooted in his desire to be in motion, to be working, to paying attention to detail and making the details work. And this, y'all, the God-given habit that carpentry, carpentry presents would probably inform his years after his beloved Carol died and got more because he got more and more particular about his ways. He had come to understand his life around making her happy, and her absence left him wondering about his own happiness. But he was not shy, and he had a wry sense of humor. 
He didn't turn away opportunities to share his opinion, especially when he'd start a conversation with, have I ever told you you knew you were in for it? Tom leaves a legacy of a strong sense of independence, a sense of responsibility for taking care of people. He leaves a sense of generosity and of welcoming people home. I can tell you from personal experience that this is so. In the end, he was prepared. He was ready. And he died in peace. Utter peace. Tended to by his family. And if we are to remember him well, let it be in the ways in which we live and love. Let his legacy of curiosity, of particularity, color the legacies that our own lives make. And in so doing, thank God for the life of Tom Stone. Give us this day our daily bread. You said you would supply. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother, father, historian, and friend, Thomas William Stone, Jr. And we commit his body, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The family both thanks you for all of your kindnesses during this time, and invites you to join them in the reception for the lunch reception that is in the fellowship hall immediately following. In this moment, let us together receive the benediction from God from Philippians. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. The God of peace will be with you. What remains is for the living. Remember Tom and remember him well. Be determined to live up to the path laid before you. And draw comfort from one another. Embrace one another. It's all we really have. But I promise it is enough. Go in peace.